Howdy ho, Dr. Diffusion here. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to get set up with the new extension that'll allow you to create videos with Diffusion. It is Model Scope Text to Video. Um, you can find it by logging into your Automatic 1111, going over to Extensions. And when you load the list, it should be pretty close to the top as long as you have it displaying um, newest first. Yeah, for me, it's the fourth one, but depending on when you watch this video, it'll probably be a little further down, but it looks a little bit like this. Um, so what is Model Scope? Uh, Model Scope is essentially text to video. So you type out words and it uses those words as tokens and diffuses um, frames for a video. Um, a lot more to it than that. Currently, uh, it looks like uh, you need about 12 gigs of VRAM to run this. I'm running it on a 3080 Ooh. Ti, so I have 24 gigabytes of VRAM, allowing me to push it a little further, um, and I'll be able to show you kind of what you can get away with. So you go to the tab once it's installed. Um, if you don't know how to ex install these, in ex if you don't know how to install these extensions, you simply click the install button, um, and then when you go here, you would update and apply. Um, the UI on a reset. So um, I'm gonna check, see if I have some updates. These get updated just about every day. So I imagine there's at least, oh, look at that. One, two, three, four, five. Um, so yeah, I have an update for the web UI uh, model scope. So I'm curious what it is that was updated. Video to video slider, what? Lower video RAM. Okay, so that's that seems like some cool stuff. There's also um, okay, so yeah, maybe we're gonna we're gonna upgrade this real quick. All right, so we're launching up Visions of Chaos's version of Automatic 1111, uh, known as Stable Diffusion Web UI uh, within the program. This is uh, probably my favorite way to run Stable Diffusion. Uh, gives you a lot of options for training for using uh, custom embeddings for 2.1 at 768, um, one of my personal favorite ways to diffuse. Um, and it, it just feels like the most open, customizable version of Stable Diffusion that's available. So, right off the bat, um, you go here. So, it's gonna say, how do I install? So you have this tab, but you're not quite done yet. You're gonna need to get the models and all the files from right here. So. Just go through, download each of these files. I already have them. So within your automatic 11.11 folder, um, you will see that there is a models folder, and then you're going to want to create a model scope folder within there, and then a T2V folder. And then just put everything you download from Hugging Face into this T2V folder. Uh, once that's all in there, you can close on out of your browser um, or your explorer window um, might be a good idea to reset this don't know if you really need to but um, yeah this, that's what this tab here is telling you is how to get everything you need and it tells you exactly where you need to put it so be sure to do that step first um, from here we can go to the output settings you can adjust your frames per second for your video so this will determine, you know, your playback. Um, sometimes I'll go as low as eight, especially if I'm generating 512 by 512, uh, but I find 15 FPS to be reasonable, um, at least for these kind of weird pseudo, I don't even know what to call it. Um, this video to video tab, brand spanking new, ladies and gentlemen. So I haven't, I haven't even tested this yet. I don't know what to expect from it. Um, pretty excited to try it, so. We'll we'll dive into that maybe after the um, maybe after the tutorial I'll give it a shot and post something. But for now we're gonna avoid this. Um, really eager to jump in, but for now we're gonna avoid it. We're gonna go straight to text to video, um, and I'm gonna show you some settings that you can get away with if you happen to have 24 gigabytes of VRAM. So uh, what I like to do is I'll adjust my width and go to 512. I'll adjust my height and go to 320. Uh, and then right off the bat, uh, let's go robot dancing, zoom out 3D. So we're gonna generate. And currently, for whatever reason, I don't get any feedback here. 
Um, I don't know if this is exclusive to Visions of Chaos's version of Automatic 1111, um, or if this is it's just indicative of the extension in the plugin. Uh, so what I do is I'll go here to this little window, um, and this is a console window for within Visions of Chaos for the, the Automatic 1111 um, process, um, and it's going to show me as it's up dating and processing. So this will kind of keep me up to date and let me know if it is, um, you know, failing, if it runs out of video RAM, if it's going, you know, what have you. It doesn't take very long. Um, I'd say even with this, um, I think it was only, what, 30 frames. Um, so yeah, it's, it's at 30 steps. It's at 24 frames. Um, I adjusted my height and width. So to my knowledge, this model was trained at 256 by 256. So you are going to run into some weird stuff if you go larger with it. Um, I'm not necessarily afraid of that. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. So once it's done, you'll notice here you have the stitching video, video um, complete output. So that's exactly what we want. So you can then click here to regenerate and you can watch these robots do a, do a right jig, you know? and they're dancing. And yeah, there's still that elephant in the room, the shutter stock watermark that is just peppered throughout all of these images. Um, it's my understanding that about 90% of everything that this model was trained on had that watermark on it. So it's not just a matter of saying, you know, like, oh, negative prompt shutter stock. Which, you know, like, what does that even do? Like, arbitrarily, yeah, it'd be great if that, like, just worked. But, like, if the majority of this source footage is from Stuttershock already, and you're telling it not to use Shutterstock, you're essentially telling it not to use the model. So, I, I, I fundamentally, I don't think there's a lot you can do to really mitigate it. Um, I find it a little less frequently. Um, distracting it, these kind of weirder resolutions outside of the uh, 256 by 256. Um, but yeah, there's a robot dancing for 24 frames at 15 frames a second, making it just under two seconds. So with these settings, um, I believe I can kick things up to about 45 seconds. I might be able to go 60. We'll try 60. Okay, so if you're going to increase your frame rate, I'm highly suggesting that you also increase your CFG scale. And I would recommend putting it just slightly above um, half of your frames. So by default, it was at 24 frames, it was at 12.5. So at 60 frames, I'm gonna go 32 CFG scale. Um, and I'm gonna click generate. It should be able to handle this resolution, this height. I'm recording video, so that might be eating into some video RAM and that might stop it. But we're gonna watch this um, go through the process and hopefully it will not fail. All right, let's see how that turned out. So, yeah, look at that. So we got uh, four seconds, because it's 60 frames at 15 frames a second. Um, and that gave us this. Uh, there's, of course, seed control, so you can um, put in specific seeds if you want to be able to uh, experiment, try the same seed with different CFG scale, different frames, different resolutions. You're going to get different results. Um, but for at least uh, what I would call a more reliable, you know, closer to 16 by 9 output. Um, I think these are about the best settings you're going to be able to get 24 gigabytes of VRAM. So um, if you kick it down to 256 by 256, you can get as far as nine, as many as 90 frames before it starts giving you trouble. Um, so I'm going to kill that. And so according to my rule, I should put this at like 45. No clue how that's going to turn out. So I'm going to pause the recording um, so that it doesn't completely die while it's trying to render. And I'll be back when it's done. All right, so that wasn't that bad. Let's check it out and see how it turned out. Okay, so maybe CFG scale needs to be higher 
not that high perhaps it looks a little overcooked so i'm gonna i'm gonna crank this back down to about 30 now that it's um now that it's a smaller resolution and we're gonna give that a shot so i'm gonna stop recording again and we're gonna try again so here's 30 cfg scale for 90 frames uh that looks pretty good to me yeah so um i would say that if you're going to raise the frames or the resolution um beyond a certain point you're going to also want to increase the cfg scale because if you don't and you have this much lower and we're going to just run this um again actually we're going to do this consistently so we're going to go 315 as the seed and we're gonna go 90 frames we're gonna do 12.5 like the default um, and we're basically gonna run this on default settings but crank it to 90 frames which I believe is about you know the most you're gonna be able to get out of this um, currently and uh, I'm gonna pause and generate all right so um, this render just finished and we're gonna check it out and as you can see it sucks it, it really sucks it's just some weird zebra pattern that's flickering so uh, we're gonna keep everything the same including the seed and we're just gonna increase the CFG scale to about 30 uh, so we're 30 90 frames with and I'm gonna pause the video while it renders so that my GPU does not commit hard curry all right let's check it out do you think we'll have something better than zebra scrub stripes uh, oh we actually get a robot dancing with the exact same seed womp, womp, womp. okay so you are going to want to increase your cfg scale if you're increasing the frame rate um, to increase the likelihood that you actually get the subject within your video because if you think about it this cfg scale needs to scale um, it, it will be using the same amount of strength for the 90 frames as it would for the 30 frames. So um, giving it a little bit of oomph um, seems to be beneficial. So that's my recommendation. So if you run it 256 by 256, you can get about 90 frames, um, depending at your frame rate. If you go as low as eight frames, I mean, that's over 10 seconds of video. Um, not, not too shabby for Shutterstock. Uh, anyway, um, this is a very exciting milestone with this generative technology. Um, for one, I'm very excited to see training um, being implemented to this, a model that does not clearly violate Shutterstock's um, IP, if you want to call it that. Um, yeah, so there, there's a lot of good things coming out on the forefront. Uh, let me know if there's something specific you'd like me to make a video about next. Otherwise, um, the plan is to dive into some more of what's available and how to utilize this amazing generative technology. Um, also, some thoughts on putting together a video talking about the ethics of this technology. Uh, unsure how strongly that would be wanted, but it's something I'm quite passionate about, so I might put something together. Um, if you liked what you saw, please ring the bell, like, subscribe, really helps the channel out. Um, might encourage me to make more than one video a year. Ugh. I'm gonna let my cat in the room. Till next time, keep on diffusing.